Welcome to the Dating Matters Strategies to Promote Healthy Teen Relationships Facilitator Training. This training will help you learn to deliver the Dating Matters youth and parent programs in your local community. As part of today's training, we will take you on a journey through places that teens frequent to help remind you of how and where they spend much of their time. These are the places where relationships form, behaviors are learned, and sadly, where teen dating violence can occur. I'll be your guide for the training, and we will walk through a teen's world together, at school, on the playground, at home, on a computer, and even inside a teen's very complicated and developing brain. Ready? Let's begin. Dating Matters, Strategies to Promote Healthy Teen Relationships, Facilitator Training. Dating Matters, Strategies to Promote Healthy Teen Relationships is a comprehensive teen dating violence prevention model from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. CDC developed Dating Matters based on techniques proven to work with 11 to 14 year olds. It includes preventative strategies for individuals, peers, families, schools, and neighborhoods. The programmatic components of Dating Matters are designed for two distinct audiences, middle school aged youth and their parents or caregivers. The youth program focuses on sixth to eighth graders to help them create and sustain healthy teen relationships and prevent teen dating violence. The parent program complements this youth training by giving parents strategies and tools they can use at home to talk to their teens about healthy relationships. Dating Matters includes a different youth program for each middle school grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth, to be implemented at school. Each program lasts approximately 50 minutes and combines information, discussions, and activities so the youth can really get involved. The focus is on learning, but through an immersive and engaging process. Similarly, there are three programs for parents. The parent program in sixth and seventh grade are implemented by facilitators in in-person groups. The eighth grade program is self-guided by parents at home and does not involve group facilitation. You are probably taking this training because you'll be implementing one or more of these programs for youth or parents. As program facilitators of this highly sensitive and personal material, it's important to keep your tone and language appropriate for your target audience. Talking to parents is very different from talking to teens. And you know those middle schoolers. If they can't relate to you, they'll tune out pretty fast. But don't worry, we'll help you out with all of that later. Whether you're serving as a youth facilitator or a parent facilitator, this training will give you all the tools you need to fill both roles. Module one of this online training provides important information about dating matters and the skills you will need to effectively deliver it in your community. All facilitators must complete this first module regardless of whether you'll be working with youth or parents. Modules two and three will help you learn much more about the specifics of the youth and parent programs, depending on which program you'll be facilitating. Even if you're working with only one of these two groups, you may find that it's a good idea to complete the training for both so you'll have a comprehensive view of the entire Dating Matters model. So what exactly do we mean when we say teen dating violence? By definition, it's a physical, sexual, psychological, or emotional violence within a dating relationship, including stalking or controlling behavior. It can happen in many forms, from the most obvious acts of harm to more subtle ones. It can occur in person or electronically with technology and social media being used in some very hurtful and harmful ways. It can be perpetrated by a current or former dating partner. Dating violence, both physical and sexual, is a risk factor for violence against an intimate partner as an adult. And prevention represents an important opportunity to reduce levels of intimate partner and sexual violence across the lifespan. Teen dating violence can start small and grow very quickly if it's not stopped right away. It can happen to anyone. It can occur between peers in the same friend group and even kids who've grown up together. No matter how or where it starts though, the fear that teen dating violence instills can be catastrophic. Remember how vulnerable you felt in middle school even if nothing bad was happening to you? Now imagine how you would feel if you were the victim of dating violence at a place and with people where you were supposed to feel safe. That's why it's really important as a facilitator of this program to stop and think about how teen dating violence presents itself at different stages and to know how patterns of behavior are often replicated. What kids see and hear at home will greatly impact how they behave at school. All sorts of factors from socioeconomic and geographic to gender, ethnicity, and family structure can contribute to these behaviors. Sadly, teen dating violence is much more common than you think. Research shows the issue is widespread. The National Youth Risk Behavior Survey found that among high school students who reported dating in the last year, nearly 10% reported physical victimization and 10% reported sexual victimization from a dating partner in the 12 months before they were surveyed. 
Think about that. One in 10 teens reported experiencing physical violence from a dating partner. One in 10 teens reported experiencing sexual violence from a dating partner. These are staggering statistics. Luckily, you can do something to help protect teens and prevent teen dating violence before it happens.